These are 25 tips showing you hidden secrets and mechanics that'll help you survive in Dragon's Dogma 2. Starting with number 1. Keep an eye out for these gold glowing beetles hidden throughout the world. Once you find this item, use it right away because they actually increase the max weight for you and your pawns. If you're having trouble finding the beetles, just look out for glowing trees, and if you're still having trouble, just go out during the night. You can even go a step further by looking up the map with all the locations. Number 2. If you're still having trouble with weight, head over to any inn and store pretty much everything away. All you really need in your inventory is a stack of Kira and a camping kit for adventures that last over a day. You'll also get a storage that's easier to access if you follow some of the steps that's in a later tip. Number 3. You can give and take items from your pawns. Give them health potions and they will heal themselves if needed. I usually give each pawn about 5 healing items then a couple cures depending on what type of battle I plan on going into next. This actually makes it useful to have one or two pawns that are bigger in size. This is extremely helpful when you need to gather things like gold ore and monster parts. All you need to do is hire a couple oversized pawns and now you're set to do some serious gathering. Number 4. Higher pawns according to their inclination. This will decide what type of personality they have. A simple pawn will gather items, hunt animals, and will actually locate chests by marking them on the radar. A kind-hearted pawn will run to the rescue usually healing people as fast as possible. A calm pawn will prioritize survival while also throwing away items in your inventory that they deem useless like rotten food. And a straightforward pawn will go around trying to fight any creature you run into. I usually like to use one kind-hearted mage and one simple archer. This way I always have heals and new materials to combine. Number 5. Hire pawns according to their specializations. Pawns that have the forager's trait will mark the location of enhancement materials located on the map, while pawns with the woodland wordsmith trait can translate the elvish language for you. Mixing specializations with the right inclinations will make pawns a lot more useful to actually have by your side. Number 6. In order to unlock specializations for your pawns, you need to do specific side quests and actions throughout the game. The first one you can come across is gifted to you by Flora. This is only after you've completed her side quest in the starting location. Now once you reach the capital Vernworth and rest at the inn, she will then show up to give you the tome. You can also get the logisticians tome early on. All you have to do is pass time at the star drop inn along with rizzing the bartender with some gifts. If you do this enough, over the span of a few in-game days, she will then eventually give you the tome. Number 7. Complete pawn quest then switch out that pawn for one with a new quest. This is good for collecting items like wake shards along with gold as well. Number 8. Make sure to carry a couple spell books on you because you could use these on slimes. This is extremely useful for classes that don't use magic. Using one well placed flame or lightning book will take out a whole group of these guys. Now they'll never slime again. Number 9. Make sure to let go of the enemy once you get on top of it. This conserves stamina making you pretty much unstoppable. Just pay attention to the enemy's attack pattern so you know when to hold back on. This works really well with mobs like griffins and dragons. Just be ready to either jump off right away as they take off or hold on for dear life. If you do manage to hold on, mobs like griffins will actually lead you to hidden areas on the map. Number 10. Try and switch vocations as you level up. This is because you can carry over augments helping you create the perfect build for you and your playstyle. This helps with understanding all the rules and why each one is actually really important. Stats don't change that much as well making it pretty easy to switch in between classes. There's only a small difference when switching from something like a mage to a fighter, but once you have the right gear it's pretty much unnoticeable. Number 11. Once you make it to the capital Vernworth, don't use all your money resting at the inn every time you and your pawns get tired. Instead, find Mildred. She's right around the corner from the tavern in one of the alleyways. Mildred will actually let you live at her house rent-free for a week. This gives you just enough time to make enough money that way you can actually buy the house once the week is over. And once you have the house, you'll get a chest to access your storage. You'll also be able to receive gifts in the mail. Number 12. Make sure to enhance all your weapons and armor right away because it only costs a small amount of gold and no resources for the first upgrade. Even the second upgrade usually only takes a couple monster parts along with still a pretty small amount of gold. Number 13. You can actually get an ultimate get out of jail free card. First, you need to make it to Captain Brant in the capital Vernworth. Once you get to the caged magistrate quest, you'll receive a key. Now take this key to this location here at the checkpoint rest town. Go up to this guy here and have him make a copy of the key. Now even after finishing the quest, you will still have a key and it works exactly like the original. This is really useful whenever you get the urge to start tossing guards off tall buildings after having to walk somewhere really far. Number 14. You can use the Riftstone here to access a menu where you can now search for specific pawns. This was seriously game changing once I figured this out. Now I always have the exact pawns I'm actually looking for. Just use the filters here and you can get as specific as you want. This is also where you can see the pawn leaderboard. This is another way to find some really good pawns as well. Number 15. You can actually trade items with your friends. All you have to do is select and hire their pawn using the Riftstone menu. Now when you dismiss the pawn you can gift your friend an item. This is pretty much the only way to make this game multiplayer. You can also select a quest for an item and select a reward too. Now you and your friend can also give each other gold as well. Number 16. Make sure to rest here and there at either an inn or your house. This is because if you load at the last rest it will literally take you back to your last rest. Don't make this mistake.
Number 17. If you're using a vocation that uses melee weapons, then you can actually chop off the tails of almost any lizard. This is really the only way you should take them out because not only does it remove most of its health, it also makes them a lot weaker. Now when you get ambushed by these guys, the first thing you should do is chop off the tail right away on each one, then let your pawns take care of the rest. Number 18. You don't need to sit on a bench over and over again, or even run back to your house and rest until morning just to use the ox cart. All you need to do is head over to this sign here. Once you use this sign, it will automatically skip to when the ox cart is about to leave. This will save a lot of time, and it seems like a lot of people have been missing the signs. No pun intended. Number 19. Pay attention to what your pawns are saying. If they start to disobey you or even start making more rude remarks, then that's a sign they might actually be getting sick with something called the Dragon's Plague. And if you don't catch this as soon as possible, you can actually wake up to an entire town being unalived from your once obedient sidekick. If you do notice any of these symptoms, then it's time to bid them farewell. Number 20. You can fast travel to structures on the map called Porta Crystals. First, you need to discover them. There's one in Vernworth and one in Harve Village. Now you need to get a hold of Fairy Stones. You can find these throughout the game or even purchase them from vendors around the map. Be ready to empty your pockets though because these Fairy Stones cost 10,000 gold each. But even with the high price, I still advise to buy these as much as possible. This will literally save you from spending hours just sitting there holding up on your joystick the entire time. You can also get a handful of portable Porta Crystals. You could obtain these items by either finding them, completely completing various quests or purchasing them through microtransactions. Once you have one, you can pretty much place them down anywhere on the map. I definitely advise having at least one for back Batal, then place the rest in spots you plan on grinding like monster locations, materials, and side quests. Now every time you go out for an adventure, make sure to have a couple fairy stones on you and you can now get out of almost any situation. Number 21. Keep an eye out for traveling merchants while out in the wild because most of them will carry exclusive items that you won't find anywhere else. These items could be anything from rare materials to decorative armor pieces. Just try not to pull your weapon out because you can actually scare them pretty easily. Number 22. You can actually unlock the Mystic Spear Hand vocation super early in the game. Once you head back to Melv after completing various quests in Vernworth, there will be a dragon attacking the town as you show up. Once you successfully defend Melv from this dragon attack, keep an eye out for this guy here. After helping you with the dragon attack, he hangs out around the south southwest side of the town. You only get a small window to talk to him, but if you manage to do this, then he will actually grant you the vocation. I personally missed this opportunity not knowing you could do this, and if you missed out as well, then that's okay. You'll still get another chance to unlock the vocation. All you have to do is complete a quest called a new god's way that you get later down the line. Number 23. Keep an eye out for Ballista located in high places around the map. If you do spot one while fighting a dragon or griffin, then you're in luck. These giant crossbows can take out drakes in just a couple shots depending on where you hit them. The game gives you a perfect opportunity to use the Ballista when you have to defend the dragon attack from Melv. When you first arrive, don't just run straight into battle like I did. Instead, go up the hill here and use the Ballista. This will actually let you defeat the dragon instead of just making it run away, which will actually give you some really good items early in the game. Number 24. There's quite a few reasons to grind for rift crystals. You can use these points for all sorts of things like changing the appearance of you and your pawns, hiring pawns way out of your rank, and you can even use them to buy special items like glasses. The only thing is this currency is going to take extremely long to actually grind. Luckily, you can obtain these points pretty easily. You can get them by fixing broken rift stones around the world, finding special chests, and finally the best way to farm RC is making your pawn as useful and attractive as possible. This is because you get RC every time another player actually hires your pawn, so make sure to give your pawn a good specialization, inclination, and a Giot 9000, and now you'll be earning passive RC like never before. Number 25. You can hire your friend's pawns without having to spend any rift crystals. This is probably the most broken mechanic in the game. You can literally start out with a couple max level pawns and just completely destroy everything. This saves you a lot of rift crystals and can help you in some tough situations. Let me know what tips you've learned so far in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Later.